Politics on Channels Television, I'm Millicent Walker. On the news this hour, members of one of Nigeria's opposition political parties, YPP, take to the streets to seek good governance in Nigeria. And candidate of the APC in Bayelsa State, Mr. David Leon, has spoken for the first time since the Supreme Court judgment, saying he is not a party to the violence in the wake of the Apex Court verdict. And the federal government is considering reviewing the status of some of the electricity companies, the discos, over the state of supply in the country. Welcome everyone to the program. We kick off with the worries over the poor state of electricity supply in the country. It is one of the issues that again got the attention of the Federal Executive Council at its weekly meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. Going forward, the federal government may review the performance of electricity distribution companies and take appropriate action to improve power distribution. The Minister of Power who made a presentation on the matter to the council says, the country generates 13,000 megawatts, but only 3,000 is taken by the distribution companies, adding that even at that, the discos are unable to pay in full. Most of the problem we are facing today in this country that we cannot get electricity supplies adequately or efficiently, it is because we have a problem in distribution. Generation, no much problem. We can generate up to 13,000, I said. But the transmission, those who are taking the electricity supply, can only take 7,000. And even at that, they are not collecting the 7,000. They only collect 4,500. And then send to distribution. Distribution now receive only 3,000. And they pay for only 1,005. Just 15% of what they are collecting. So government are now completing. Government have to fill in the, the, the gap. So we cannot continue like that. If you have to take a decision, if they are ready to continue, fine. If they are not ready to continue, maybe they should give way to investors or whoever that is ready to come and invest. In Bayelsa State, there seems to be a ray of hope for residents of the state as the state government has declared its readiness to partner with the power distribution company to provide at least 12 hours of electricity every day. Briefing journalists shortly after a closed-door meeting with the governor, Diodiri, and officials of the power company, former general manager of the Bayelsa Electricity Company, assured the people of the government's determination to revive the power sector in the state. The governor, in his bid to ensure that Bielsans have at least some succor in terms of life, he first described the state capital, Yenegua, as the headquarters of darkness because of the activities of the operators of the power system and charged us to make sure that we have 12 hours electricity in the state daily from now. While doing so, Government and the communities will also do their own bit by ensuring that payment is done. According to him, even in Freetown, nothing is free, and therefore he will make sure that the communities pay. Then, on the part of government, government will meet their commitments for electricity payment. For where it is possible, we will give 24 hours light, which also goes with the amount of money that will come out of your pocket. 
move away from Bielsa and electricity supply to security. Lawmakers in the National Assembly, they seem to be making more moves to solve some of the challenges uh, confronting the country, at least those within their powers. And one major move uh, they made yesterday is to ensure that a bill seeking to establish the National Commission against the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, that it passes through second reading in the Senate. Our correspondent Linda Kibwe has that report. The objectives of the bill include to identify sources and main routes of these small arms, ammunition and light weapons, to liaise with the relevant authorities, agencies and organizations with the aim of tackling this menace. The truth is this, we know all the gun runners that are in this country. The only thing is that those that are settled with that responsibility to actually take actions are not doing what they are expected to do. Members of the Young Progressives Party, YPP, they've staged a peaceful protest in front of the National Assembly. They are demanding the structuring of the nation's security architecture. The YPP National Chairman, Bishop Amakari, wants the leadership of the National Assembly to ensure electoral reforms that will restore the confidence of the electorate in government and its agencies. Today, we are coming here with our letter to give to the um, President of the Senate and of, of course also to the Speaker of the House of Representatives. We have expressed everything we feel that we, we should express here that borders the well-being of Nigeria. Number one, we are concerned that uh, the level of insecurity in Nigeria is becoming something that we almost, you know, rise you know, on, on, on this uh, minas. And um, we feel that at the moment, Nigerians are calling for the rejig of the security, you know, apparatus. And we must, we must for, for honestly, if a country is suffering from insecurity, it means that the economic growth of that country is also, you know, uh, is taunted. We also believe that the electoral reform is necessary. There's no any other time that, than now. And this has the very salient national issues that we want to come and uh, of course um, remind the National Assembly that it is their duty it is their duty to make these laws in fact to go in, in fact to, to speed into action let's now get some thoughts on the YPP's move and the suggestions for solutions to some of the issues on security and being joined by Mr. Egbeola Martins, the National Publicity Secretary of the YPP, and Mr. Richard Menga, uh, Chieftain of the All Progressives Congress. I'd like to thank you both for joining us at this time. Let me begin with you, um, Mr. Martins, and um, that is, I mean, you had the protest talking about your party now yesterday, uh, calling it a walk for peace. But um, let's start from the leaked memo uh, from the office of the NSA uh, on the chief of staff to the president. Now, these seem to actually suggest that um, perhaps all is not well with um, those who have been given the mandate uh, to solve some of these challenges, security challenges, that is. What's your take? Yes, thank you very much, um, Millicent, for this opportunity given to us. Um, to be able to express our thoughts. And on the leaked memo, I think it's not something new. It's something that happened last year, December, and we're just getting to know about it now. And uh, we've been complaining severally about the situation of security in this country. And then um, that leaked memo is just a further confirmation of how things have actually degenerated. Um, if the NSA could be complaining that um, there's a kind of impediment to him um, doing his job, uh, because of um, a kind of um, 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 intervention at the level of the chief of staff. I think it's something that calls for worry. It's something that calls for concern. Um, the, the, I think the security chiefs should understand who should be giving them directives. Uh, uh, um, what, we, what we just want to say, in essence, is that the, the APC should get their acts together. 
Um, this is not a party affair. It's something that concerns the old Nigerians. People are dying daily. Um, it doesn't exempt anybody from any part of the world. The earlier they come and address this issue as a unit, the better. Let's find out from Mr. Manga. Um, what's your party saying about this? I mean, are the accusations true? The interference by President Muhammadu Buhari's chief of staff, Mr. Abakari, on matters of national security, are they slowing down meaningful gains uh, that the president ought to uh, have achieved or achieving? Well, I thank you very much for this opportunity once again. As a matter of fact, the security challenges in this country are of much concern to every patriotic Nigerian because we're no longer secured. But then, coming to talk of the protest by YPP, uh, talking about the rejigging of the security agencies, you see, people fail to understand that the president himself is a retired general. Not, not, not just that, he was a general officer commanding, he was a GOC. Nigerians shouldn't forget about what happened during Shadari's time, when the Chadian soldiers attacked Nigeria, where Buhari was the GOC in just. We all know what he did to save the situation. People should not uh, fail to understand that for the president to have kept the service chiefs there, there is something attached to it. There is no serious government that will just decide to keep very sensitive security operatives if they are performing below expectation. So you see, people telling a general, a retired general, what to do about security is just like a lawyer telling a medical doctor on how to do operation. Where about a leak memo, which they're talking about, where that is an administrative issue, I don't think it should form the basis of a discussion. But like I always say, the president is trying his best and like Oliver Twist, I always say this, he should do more to end the security challenges we are faced in this nation. But I must ask you, Mr. Manga, um, because you said several things. Uh, you said that based on, on the president's history, um, that uh, his retaining of service chiefs is merited. But then there are some who have argued uh, that based on the service rules, it's actually illegal. And also, some have said that officers who are junior to the service chiefs uh, have been forced into retirement. And perhaps this has also affected uh, their professional morale. I have also said this in my last conversation with you, that every dream, the dream of every soldier is to become chief of army staff or to head his various units in the military. But then... People should, uh, all the same, understand that it is the right of the president to decide who and who should work with him, especially sensitive positions like heads of uh, security agencies. So in as much as we talk about this, people should not force the president into doing what they expect. It is th that this popular statement that he who wears the shoe knows where it pinches. So Nigerians, Buhari is there. He knows the reason why he's keeping all these security chiefs. So, you know, most of these things are not done on the basis of public opinion. As I earlier said, no serious government will just buy some sensitive security operatives who are performing below expectation. Let's quickly get to so Mr. Martin's see, see point of view. Beyond what, beyond what people are saying. Let's quickly mm. get Mr. Martin's point of view on this issue, especially what you think the solution should be, uh, seeing as you've protested uh, yesterday on this matter. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Millicent. Um, I think the only set of people who seems not to understand the enormity of the challenges that um, is currently facing this nation are those uh, are the uh, leadership and then um, those supporting APC. Um, because you cannot continue to do things the same way and expect a different result. You can't be applying the strategies of yesteryears to uh, curb the current challenges that we are, we are facing. Um, yes, with due respect to Mr. President, yes, um, um, he is a retired general. We, we, we agree. But um, a retired general does not mean he's infallible or he also cannot, you know, learn to accommodate the thoughts you know, our concerns of Nigeria, which is what right. we are all appealing for. We are not saying the 
um, security chiefs have not performed. No, they've performed well. But what we are saying is that it is time to move forward. We are not saying that removal will equally solve the challenges that we have on ground. And that was what led to our protest yesterday, where we tried to analyze the, the problems and challenges we are having as a nation. Right. And I'm you are we'll, aware we'll that... We'll have to let both of you go on this issue. We, we really would like to appreciate um, both your time on the program. Ms. Egbola Martins, National Publicity Secretary of the YPP. And indeed, Mr. Richard Menga, Chief Chairman of the APC. Many thanks for joining us. I'll be at very short. Still to come also on the program, APC governorship candidate in Bayelsa State is distanced himself from the violence unleashed after the verdict. We'll find out more details when we return. Welcome back, everyone, to the program. The first of some of your stories in brief. We begin with the House of Representatives. They've kicked against the new policy of the Petroleum Technology Development Fund uh, that students who intend to apply for its scholarship programs must possess a national identification number, NIN. Uh, they, however, want the PTDF to accept the local government certificate as a means of identification as they question the National Identity Management Commission over its inability to register more people. Elsewhere, the governor of Ikiti State, Dr. Kairi Fayemi, is of the view that qualitative education is achievable in public schools if all relevant stakeholders are on the same page. Now, the governor addressed the World Press Conference for an alumni homecoming in his capacity as president of the 1975-1980 set of Christ School, Adu Ikiti, his alma mater. He believes the commencement of the return of some schools to its original owners, coupled with the Child's Rights Act in the state, among others, will help add value to the education sector. Well, let's find out what's been discussed at the National Assembly uh, with plenary today. We have our correspondent for us, Terry Kumi. Hello, Terry. Well, hello, Millicent. Thank you for coming to me. It's, uh, it's going to be a long day in the House of Representatives because quite a number of bills and motions that were stepped down in the past two days because of se several engagements uh, in the House of Representatives will be coming up today. Yesterday, the House launched its own magazine, and that took the entire day, and they only ended up taking one motion. So today is going to be a long day. The day kicked off with a motion of urgent public importance by the chairman of the House Committee on Judiciary calling for the appointment of more judges justices of the Supreme Court to uh, for speedy dispensation of justice. Now, according to him, he cited an example where it took the Supreme Court the entire day and into the night to deliver justice, to deliver judgment on a few cases. And he says there are quite a number of cases pending in the Supreme Court which require judgment. And currently there are about 13 Supreme Court justices and the Constitution allows that at least seven uh, members must constitute a panel and they cannot even constitute two panels. That was unanimously adopted by lawmakers in the House of Representatives. There are about 19 bills up for first reading and here are a few that might interest you. There's a bill for the voting rights of Nigerian citizens living outside the country as has been canvassed in some quarters for uh, Nigerians in diaspora to participate in the election election process. There's a bill for the compulsory treatment and care of victims of gunshots wound. It's an amendment bill. There's an act already in place and there's amendment, an amendment to that. We'll wait to see how that will turn out, but that will be known sometime next week. There's another one that will interest you. It's the Civil Society Regulatory Commission. It, is an establishment bill that seeks to regulate the activities of the civil society. So those bills are up for first reading. As I said, a long day. One motion which I think where a lot of people will pay attention to is uh, one calling for investigation into the recruitment exercise of the NNPC, uh, alleging that persons who did not even participate in the aptitude test or oral test are being given letters of employment. And so the House will be looking into that. That's, that's it from the House of Representatives. Back to you. Right, many thanks, Terry Kumi, there with the latest. We look forward to your report later in the day. To all the stories now, Nigeria has been becoming great for too long, and it is time for the country to stamp on her greatness. Uh, those were the words of a Kenyan professor of law, Patrick Lumumba, during the launch of the House of Representatives news magazine, which you heard from our correspondent there. Now, Professor Lumumba believes that Nigerians are the best at what they do wherever they are found all over the world. 
while addressing the lawmakers. He charged them to live up to their titles as honorables. Nigeria has been becoming great for too long. The time is now that Nigeria must be great, in fact. You will know that in the next few years, Nigeria will produce one in every five of Africans. When I travel to different parts of the world and you travel to different parts of the world, if you do not meet a Nigerian doctor who is at the best in the world, you meet a Nigerian astronaut who is at the best in the world, you meet a Nigerian banker who is at the best in the world, you meet a Nigerian who is as good as anybody in the world. There is no problem with Nigerians. In fact, there are those who say that you go, if you go to any part of the world and you do not meet a Nigerian, run away from that place because that place is not worthy of visiting. Now that Nigerians and Africans refer you to as honorable members, the question is, are you honorable members or horrible members? Because the question as to whether you are honorable is determined by the service that you render to the people. For well, the stories now, the ousted governor-elect of Bielsa State, Mr. David Leon, has broken his silence since the Supreme Court nullified his election as governor of the state. His first reaction is coming at a time he's being accused of plotting the recent outbreak of violence in the state after the Supreme Court verdict. He explains that rather than instigating violence, he has been preoccupied with exploring all legal processes on the matter and that his thoughts and actions have never wavered from the fact that the court is the last hope of the common man. He assures the people of Bielsa State that as a peace lover, he would never support or direct anyone to engage in violence. And there appears to be another relief uh, coming the way of the former National Security Advisor, um, Sambo Dasuki, yesterday, where an Abuja High Court ordered the release of his international passport about two months after he was released on bail. The court ordered the registrar of the court to release the document through his counsel to enable him to carry out renewal of the document, which expired since it was taken by the court. The order will, be, will also enable the former NSA to obtain a visa for a specialized medical consultation abroad. The former National Security Advisor, along with four others, are standing trial before the court for alleged breach of trust and money laundering. He was in custody for four years before his bail was granted in December last year. And finally, the United Delta Development Commission now has a new acting managing director. He's Professor Daniel Ponde, a professor of medicine at the Niger Delta University and the former Provost College of Health Sciences of the institution. His appointment is contained in a statement from the presidency which also announced the approval of the enlargement of the Interim Management Committee of the NDDC from three to five members. The five members of the committee are now Professor Daniel Ponde, who is the Acting uh, Managing Director, Dr. Kairo Jigbo, um, AJ Executive Director Projects, Mr. Banga Etang, Age Executive Director, Finance and Administration. Other members are Mrs. Caroline Nagwo, Cecilia Kitomide, a former Vice President with the African Development Bank. President Buhari had directed that the Interim Management Committee would be in place till the forensic audit of the NDDC was concluded. And that's our program this afternoon. We'd like to thank you for watching. Don't forget to join the discussions via social media platforms. I'm Minister Tomorrow Craft. Bye for now.